my name is Paul Grogan and in this gaming rules video I'm going to be teaching you how to play Kanban EV, designed by Vital Lacerda and published by Eagle Griffin Games who sponsored this video. In Kanban EV, you and up to three other players are employees in a car factory, trying to secure your career and impress the boss, Sandra. You will take new car designs, order in new parts to the warehouse, Take some of those parts and store them on your own board, using them in assembly to produce cars which roll along the conveyor and onto the test track, where they can be claimed and placed in your garage. You can also upgrade the six different parts of each model, making the cars worth more points. All the time your actions are being watched by Sandra, the factory manager. She moves through the departments evaluating those who have fallen behind on their training and underperforming. At the end of each working day there may be an end of week scoring if Sandra is at her desk. And there could also be a meeting where the players present their progress on a number of current performance goals to Sandra in order to earn her favour. After a certain amount of time and a number of meetings, the game ends with final scoring, and the player with the most points at the end of the game is declared the winner and earns a promotion. Place the game board in the middle of the play area. Place the Sandra reference tile here. Use the side with the red stripe. Place the car parts next to the game board and choose three different ones at random and place them in the recycling section of the board. Place the parts, vouchers and books next to the game board. Separate the factory goals into three stacks based on their type. From each stack, choose two at random to use and return the others to the box. Place the certification goals face up in the matching numbered spaces above the certification track. And place the other goals in pairs on the spaces in R&D. In each pair, the goal with the lower number of icons should be on top, and the one with the most icons on the bottom. Then, place a number of generic speech tokens on each factory goal. In a two-player game, place one token on each factory goal. In a three-player game, place two tokens on the factory goal with the lower number of each pair, and then one token on the one with the higher number. And in a four-player game, place two tokens on each factory goal. In the R&D department, if playing with two or three players, Cover the test track with the overlay board, depicting the same number of people as players in the game. Place the car part value markers face up on the leftmost space of the upgrade value track, this side up. Place the pace car in either of the striped spaces facing counterclockwise. Place the production cycle marker and meeting marker inside the test track. Shuffle the design tiles and place one at random in each of the rightmost eight spaces of the design department design side up. Place the rest of the designs in three stacks of nine tiles each here. The leftmost stack is known as the central stack, and the other two are the first office stacks. In the assembly department, place one car of each colour in the matching spaces, facing to the left. Place another car of each colour on the yellow plate to the left of each other car. Place all of the other cars next to the game board near the assembly department. Shuffle the five demand tiles and place one at random face up in each of the two spaces near the end of the line and place the remaining three face down in a stack nearby. On the face up ones, place a number of generic speech tokens next to each tile as depicted on the tile. Shuffle the Kanban order cards and place them face down next to the logistics department. Reveal the top card and place the six depicted car parts in the corresponding spaces of the warehouse. Then put the card face down on the bottom of the deck. Shuffle the performance goal cards and place four of them in the meeting room in administration. Then place the rest of them face down in a deck nearby. Choose one of the final goal tiles at random and place it here, returning all other final goal tiles to the box. Place the weak marker here and place Sandra at her desk. Shuffle the award tiles and make five stacks of either two tiles for a two and three player game or stacks of three tiles in a four player game. Return the rest of the tiles to the box. Each of the five departments has a training track. Near the last space, place a stack of tiles and put a generic speech token on top. Each player chooses a colour and takes a player board and all other components in that colour. Place one of your speech tokens in a slot on your player board and the rest next to your board. Place your basic garage bonus tiles face up on your garages. The order doesn't matter, except for the one with the padlock on the back, which must be placed on the right. Place a double upgrade tile here, this side up. Place a lock on each of the five visible lock symbols. Take a parts voucher and place it here, and then draw three performance goal cards and two Kanban order cards and keep them in your hand. You don't need to keep these cards in your hand the whole game, just put them face down on the table if you need to. Place one of your discs on the starting space of each of the five department training tracks. And place your banked shift marker on the left space of the shift bank. 
Place your final disc as a production points marker on space 15 of the points track. Use this to track your points gained or lost during the game. After setup is complete, but before the game begins, there's a few more steps to perform. This is the new employee orientation. Choose a start player at random, and then beginning with that player and going clockwise, each player places their certification marker on an empty space in the leftmost section of the certification track. When you place your marker on a space, gain the benefit of that space as depicted by the icon. The order of the markers here from right to left is known as the certification track order. It's important for the next step and also for the turn order at the start of the game. In this order, each player takes one car part from logistics and then one design from either of the rightmost eight spaces or from the top of one of the stacks and places them both on their player board. Note that during the game, if you take a design from one of the four rightmost spaces, you would gain a benefit. That benefit does not apply during setup. After all players have taken their car parts and designs, refill any empty spaces in design by sliding tiles to the right to fill any gaps, and then filling any empty spaces with tiles from the corresponding first office stack. That's the setup of the game done, you're now ready to play. The game is played over a series of rounds, with each round representing one day of work in the factory. Each day is divided into two phases. Phase one is the department selection phase, where players take turns to choose a workstation in a department that they want to work in for that day. And then in phase two, in workstation order, players use their shifts to work and or train in the department they're in. At the end of each working day, except for the first, if Sandra is at her desk in administration, there is an end of week scoring. And also, if the meeting marker is in administration, it's time for a meeting where players can gain points by impressing Sandra talking about their achievements. The process of work days continues until there have been a certain number of weeks and meetings, at which point the game ends and you proceed to final scoring. On the first day of the game, in certification track order, each player chooses an empty workstation and places their worker there. In subsequent rounds, each player in order from top to bottom on the board selects a different department to the one that they're currently in, and then places their worker on an empty workstation in that department. What this means is that the choice you make on one day affects your choice on the next day, and it's company policy that you cannot work in the same department two days running. On the first day, Sandra works in admin, filling in very important paperwork. However, during this phase on subsequent days, Sandra moves to another department when it's her turn to select another department. For example, on day two, all the players take turns to choose another department, and then because Sandra is at the bottom of the board, she takes her turn last and she moves to the next empty workstation of the next department. If all of the workstations in the next department are occupied, she skips that department and moves on to the next one. In the work phase, each player, including Sandra, takes a turn in the new order of workers from top to bottom. When it's your turn, you work a number of shifts as determined by the workstation you chose. This is either two or three shifts for workstations in all departments apart from administration, where it's one or two. And also, if you have any bank shifts, you may spend some of them to work extra shifts. Each shift represents three hours of time, and you are not allowed to work more than four shifts per day. There are various tasks that can be completed in each department, some taking just one shift and some taking more. After you have completed your turn, lay your worker down to indicate that you have finished work for the day. After a possible meeting and end of week scoring, if the game hasn't ended, proceed with the next day. Before I explain how the individual departments work, I'm going to talk about training and certification because it applies to all departments. Each department has its own training track, indicating the current level of training of each of the players. When you work in a department, one of the tasks that you can perform is to train. For each shift you spend on training, move your marker to the next space, placing it on top of any other markers already there. If your marker crosses the arrow, you are considered to be certified in that department. When this happens, look at the certification track and move your marker to an empty space in the next section, gaining the benefit of that space. Being certified in a department also gives you some benefit in the department itself and removes one of the locks from your player board. I'll explain both of these in more detail when I cover the specific rules for each department. Also, when working in a department, before or after spending your shifts, you can return one or more book tokens back to the supply. Each book you return gives you one point of training, moving your marker one space forward on the training track. 
This does not cost any shifts at all, as it represents you doing homework and gaining extra training on your own time. Even after you are certified, you can continue to train in the department up to the point where you become an expert by reaching the final space of the track. The first player to do this in each department takes the speech token on top of the stack of award tiles and then secretly looks through the award tiles, takes one of them and puts the rest back face down. Award tiles give you an immediate benefit and are then removed from the game. Any other player who reaches the final space chooses an award tile from those remaining. At the end of the game, you will also gain points based on your relative position on the training tracks. There's a few key rules I need to cover before we jump into explaining the departments. Books, parts vouchers, bank shifts and generic speech tokens. There are various ways in the game to gain books and parts vouchers and when you gain either of them, place them to the side of your player board. You cannot use them on the same turn as you get them. At the end of your turn, move them onto your player board, where you can now use them on a future turn. There are also a number of ways in which you can gain banked shifts. When you do, move your marker up the shift bank. But like books and parts vouchers, you cannot use banked shifts on the same turn that you get them. During the game, you can gain generic speech tokens. Whatever you do, return the token to the supply and move one of your speech tokens from the side of your player board to one of the slots on your player board. If all of the slots are filled already, keep the generic token by the side of your player board instead. You can exchange them for one of your own after a meeting. Instead of covering the departments in the order in which they are on the board, I'm actually going to explain them in the logical order of workflow of car manufacturing. The first of these is the design department. Designs are created here, which are then used in R&D to upgrade specific parts or to claim cars into your garage for testing. Other than training, there is only one other task that can be completed in this department, which is select a design. This task costs one shift to complete and allows you to choose any of the eight rightmost designs and move it to an empty space on your player board. If you choose one of the designs from the two rightmost columns, you gain the benefit depicted between the columns, either one bank shift or one book. Whenever you take a design, do not automatically fill in any gaps. However, after you have finished spending all of your shifts here, slide all designs in both rows to the right to fill any gaps, and then refill any empty spaces with tiles from the corresponding first office stacks. If the first office stack is depleted, refill empty spaces with designs from the central stack. When you become certified in this department, you get two benefits. First, you remove this padlock from your player board, allowing you to have one more design on your desk. Second, a new task becomes available to you in this department, selecting an advanced design. This task is similar to the normal one, except that you can now take the top designs from the stacks. If you take the last design from one of the first office stacks, replace it with the tile from the central stack. The logistics department is where you can restock the warehouse with car parts and then take the ones you need. Other than training, there are two tasks that can be completed in this department. The first of these is to issue a Kanban order, which costs one shift and can only be done once per turn. First, you gain one bank shift. Remember that you cannot use bank shift on the turn that you acquire them. Then, choose one of the two Kanban order cards from your hand and place it onto the Kanban space of the main board. There are four possible ways you can place the card, either here or here, or you can rotate the card and put it here or here. Then, for each symbol that matches a warehouse on its side of the line, add one car part to the appropriate warehouse. So here, you would add two batteries, one motor and one electronics. The drivetrain and autopilot are not added because the symbols are on the wrong side of the line. If the card would have been placed like this instead, you would have added two batteries, one drivetrain and one electronics. And remember, the card could have been rotated and placed in either of these two positions instead. Finally, place the card on the bottom of the deck and draw a new card into your hand. The second task you can complete here is to collect car parts, which cost one shift. Select one of the warehouses and take any number of car parts from that warehouse and place them on your player board. You cannot take more car parts than you can fit on your board. When you become certified in this department, you get two benefits. First, you remove this padlock from your player board, giving you a bigger cupboard to store your car parts in. And then second, a new task becomes available to you in this department, which is receiving a parts voucher. This costs one shift and can only be taken once per turn. You simply take a parts voucher and place it next to your player board. At the end of your turn, move the voucher onto your board.
The assembly department is where you use your car parts to build cars and watch them roll down the assembly line. At the start of your turn when working in this department, before completing any tasks, check the assembly spaces for each of the models of cars. If a model has all of its assembly spaces full of car parts, then return all of those parts to the supply. Then, other than training, there is one task to complete in this department, providing a car part. This costs one shift. First, move a car part from your player board to any empty assembly space. The part must be different from any other part currently on assembly spaces of that model. Also, if the model has had any of its car parts upgraded, which is something I'll explain later on, all upgraded parts must be provided before non-upgraded parts. For example, here the city car has had its body and electronics upgraded. Therefore, the next car part that must be provided here is the electronics. After a car part is added, move the car at the start of the assembly line forward. If a car is moved onto a space occupied by another car, the other car is displaced along the path following the arrows. And this continues until no more cars can be displaced. If there is ever an option of paths, you choose which path the cars take. Finally, place a new car of the appropriate model onto the start of the assembly line. One common misunderstanding when learning this game is that it's important to remember that a new car is added every time a single car part is added, not just when all of the spaces are full. If a car moves off the end of the conveyor, complete some extra steps. First, you gain one or two points depending on which conveyor delivered the car. And then, if the car model matches either of the depicted demand tiles, you gain a generic speech token from next to the demand tile if there are any left. Finally, move the car to the end of the line of cars behind the pace car. There can only ever be four cars behind the pace car. If a fifth car would be added, first remove the car directly behind the pace car, advance the other cars, and then put the new car at the back. At the end of your turn, check the demand tiles. If either of them now have no more speech tokens next to them, the current demand for that type of car has been met. Take a new demand tile and place it onto the demand space, shuffling the previous tile back into the stack. And then place a number of generic speech tokens next to it as indicated. When you become certified in this department, you unlock the fifth garage on your player board. You can now use this garage to park a car in, which I'll explain in the next chapter. Before moving on, there's two extra rules that I want to explain, and that's parts vouchers and recycling. If you have any parts vouchers, you can use one of them as if it were any car part, but you can only do this at the moment you actually need it, and it's used as if it was that car part. You cannot, for example, just spend a voucher to take a part. So going back to the previous example, if you needed to provide an electronics part and you didn't have one, but you had a parts voucher, then you could spend that parts voucher to use an electronics part from the supply and place it into assembly. Also, you could use a parts voucher even if you had the part you needed. The other thing I wanted to mention now is recycling. The recycling area of the board is available at any time on your turn, no matter what department you are working in. You can exchange a car part from your board with one in recycling. There can only ever be three parts in recycling and they must all be different. You can use recycling for free as many times as you want on your turn. In the R&D department, you can claim cars from the test track and put them into your garage for testing. And you can also upgrade the parts of the different models. Other than training, there are two tasks to complete in this department. The first one I'll explain is claiming cars. To do this, you must have designs on your desk that match the cars you want to take. You can claim multiple cars as part of the same task. The number of shifts that it costs to claim cars depends on the position of the car behind the pace car. The first car costs one shift, the second and third cars cost two shifts, and the fourth car costs three shifts. Remember that you cannot spend more than four shifts per day. To claim a car, take a design from your desk that matches the car you want to claim and return it to the bottom of the central stack. Then take the claimed car and place it into one of your empty garages. If you don't have any empty garages, you cannot claim a car. Whenever you place a car in a garage, receive the benefit of that garage. These benefits are all explained in the reference booklet. After you have finished claiming all of the cars that you want to on your turn, advance the pace car a number of spaces counterclockwise around the test track equal to the number of cars claimed, and then advance the other cars behind it. If the pace car reaches or crosses one of the striped spaces, move the meeting marker from here into administration. This indicates that there will be a meeting at the end of the current day. 
The second task in R&D is to upgrade a design, which costs one shift each time you want to do it. Choose a design on your desk that depicts a car part icon. This represents the specific part that you will upgrade and the design tile shows the model of car which you will upgrade that part in. You must also have the corresponding car part, but remember you can use a parts voucher or recycling if you need to. Place the car part onto an empty upgrade space for the model that you are upgrading and receive the benefit of the space if any. On the upgrade value track, move the marker for the car part that you just upgraded one space to the right and then flip the design you used face down and place it to the right of your player board, immediately scoring the two points shown on the tile. When you become certified in this department, remove the lock from your double upgrade tile. You now have a once per game ability that when you upgrade a design, like I've just talked about, you can choose to make it a double upgrade. If you do this, increase the car parts value by two instead of one and flip it over. This means that it cannot be double upgraded again during the game. You then immediately gain points equal to the new value of the car part. And then you flip your double upgrade tile over to show that you have used this ability. At this point in the rules explanation, I just want to take a moment to talk about the concept of tested designs. If you have an upgraded design tile for a model of car that you have in one of your garages, that design is known as a tested design. For example, if you previously upgraded the motor of the sports car and then claim a sports car from the test track, the design that you have becomes a tested design. To show that a design is tested, move it to the slot above the matching car in your garage. Various game effects refer to tested designs, so it helps to be easily able to identify which of your designs are tested and which ones are not. The final department to explain is administration, which is a bit different to the others. From here, you can micromanage other departments. When you work in administration, the only task available to you is training. However, you can select one other department and spend shifts and books there as if you were working in that department too. For example, you're at this workstation that gives you two shifts. You then spend one of your bank shifts to work an extra one, giving you three in total. You choose to micromanage the design department. You can spend one of your shifts training in administration, another shift to train in design, and your third shift to take one of the designs to your player board. You can then also spend your books to train in administration and or design. The administration department is really useful if all of the workstations are full in the department that you really wanted to work in that turn. You just work in administration and micromanage that department instead. When you become certified in this department, remove the lock from your speech token slot. You can now have five speech tokens instead of four. At the start of the game, you may remember that three pairs of factory goals were placed on the board, four in the two parts of R&D and two above the certification track. These factory goals represent the part of the factory where the board of directors want to see some improvement. As soon as you meet the requirements of one of these goals, take one of the speech tokens from the tile. And once all tokens have been taken, remove the goal from the game. These two goals relate to the number of cars in your garages. So here, as soon as you have two cars in your garages, you meet this goal. And then if you have four cars in your garages, you meet this one. These goals relate to the number of upgraded designs you have, which are the designs either to the side of your player board or above it. And these goals relate to the number of certifications you have. In other words, which section of the certification track your marker is in. Completing factory goals is basically another way to gain speech tokens, and I will explain how these work in a later chapter. The factory manager, Sandra, is responsible for the factory production. She is also constantly monitoring your performance. As mentioned earlier, in the department selection phase, Sandra takes her turn in order to select a new department. Whenever she moves to administration, however, instead of placing her at a workstation, place her at her desk. From day two onwards, when you are resolving the player turns, Sandra takes her turn in order and she evaluates the department that she is in. Look at the training track for that department. The player or players who have the least training are evaluated, whether or not they are currently working in the department. If you are evaluated, look up the criteria for penalty on the player aid. If you meet this criteria, you lose one point, plus another point for each bank shift you have fewer than five. For example, Sandra is evaluating the design department. Purple and blue have the least training in that area and are therefore evaluated. The criteria for getting a penalty in this department is having two or fewer designs on your board. 
Purple has three designs, so suffers no penalty. Blue, however, has no designs and loses four points. One for the base penalty and another three because Blue only has two banked shifts. After evaluating the department that she's in, Sandra also carries out her own task. These tasks are all explained on the player aid, but I will cover them here. In R&D, the cars on the test track are advanced one space. And if the pace car moves to a striped space, move the meeting marker as usual. In assembly, Sandra's task is to remove all car parts from assembly spaces. In logistics, she removes all but one car part from each warehouse. In design, Sandra shuffles the rightmost four tiles to the bottom of the central stack. Slide the tiles down and then refill any gaps as normal. In administration, Sandra's task is to perform end of week scoring. This does not happen in the first round of the game. When Sandra performs her task in administration, the week comes to an end and all players score points as follows. Look at the cars in your garages. For each car, you score one point for each upgrade that has been made to that model, as shown by the number of car parts on upgrade spaces of that model. Then score another point for each tested design you have of that model. Here, for example, you have two sports cars in your garages. There are three upgrades to the sports cars, so the cars are worth a base amount of three points each. However, you also have a tested design for sports cars because it was you that upgraded the electronics, making each of these cars worth four points each for a total of eight points. After all players have scored points for the cars in their garages, move the weak marker one space forward if able. This may trigger the end of the game, which I'll explain soon. At the end of each day, check to see if the meeting marker is on the meeting space in administration. And remember that it's moved here when the pace car reaches or passes one of the striped spaces. At the meeting, you and the other players will use your speech tokens you have been collecting, along with the performance goals on display, to gain points. At the start of the meeting, there are four visible performance goals, but during the meeting, each player must play exactly one of the three goals from their hand, so there will be more goals as the meeting goes on. To resolve a meeting, players take turns in the order of the markers on the certification track. Once all players have taken a turn, the process repeats again and again until all players have passed. And once you have passed, the next time it's your turn, you could jump back in, but the meeting will end when all players pass consecutively. On your turn, you must choose to do one of the following two options, speak or pass. If you choose to speak, there are two steps to carry out and you can do one or both of these steps. First, you may play a performance goal card from your hand, placing it near the other goals. At some point in the meeting, you must play one and only one of your performance goal cards from your hand, and you cannot pass until you have done so, but exactly when you play one is up to you. The second step you choose when speaking is to place one of your speech tokens from your player board onto a goal card of your choice. If you played a performance goal this turn and you chose to play a speech token as well, it must be placed on the goal that you've just placed. When placing a speech token, place it on the highest numbered empty space on the card. Each player can only have one speech token per card. When you place a speech token on a card, you immediately score that goal. The card depicts the criteria for scoring, and you can score it a number of times up to a maximum of the multiplier printed on the space where you placed a token. For example, this goal is about having upgraded designs. It's perfect for you since you have five of them. You take the first turn at the meeting, so you jump at the chance to tell Sandra how great you are, placing a speech token on the top space. And even though you have five upgraded designs, the multiplier is a times three. Therefore, you can only score three of them. Each is worth two points, so you score six points. The orange player is next and they decide to talk about upgraded designs too. The next multiplier is times two, but they only have one of them, so they only score two points. You can even place a token on a goal if it would score you no points, but be careful doing this too much as there are probably better uses for your tokens. Also, you're not required to place a speech token on your own goal, although you probably want to because you probably should have been spending time before the meeting to look at the three goal cards in your hand and work out which one of them you're going to play when it comes to the meeting. Remember, you must play one of your goal cards. And once you have played your goal, other people can jump on it and speak about it on their turns too. So be careful when playing one that other players don't get too much benefit. Your other option in the meeting is to pass. You cannot pass if you have not yet played your performance goal. And also, if you do pass, 
you can still take part in the meeting on a later turn. It can be sometimes beneficial to pass and wait to see what goals the other players might play. One quick note about the recycling area. During a meeting, this area is closed and cannot be used. This is important because some of the goals refer to having certain car parts, so you must get them before the meeting starts if you want to use them. Once all players pass consecutively, the meeting is over and you perform the following steps. All speech tokens used are returned back to the players, but they're placed to the side of their player board, not on it. Any speech tokens you did not use remain in their slots. If at this point you have any generic speech tokens, return them to the supply, and for each one you return, move a speech token to an empty slot on your board. Then, discard all face-up performance goals, removing them from the game. Each player then chooses one of the two remaining goals from their hand and places it face down in the meeting room. Once they are all placed, reveal them, and if playing with fewer than four players, fill the rest of the remaining spaces with cards from the deck. Each player then draws two new performance goals from the deck so that they have three cards in hand again. Return the meeting marker back to the test track and advance the production cycle marker one space forward if able. The production cycle marker and the weak marker track the end of the game. When one of them is on at least the second space and the other one is on the third space, the end of the game is triggered. Finish the current day, including an end of week scoring and meeting if appropriate, and then proceed to final scoring. First, look at the final goal tile, which depicts three separate achievements. You should have been looking at this tile from the start of the game, as it will give you an objective to aim for that will score you more points. The criteria for being able to score each of the achievements is shown on the tile. For example, this achievement requires you to have three of the same type of car, and it's worth seven points. This one is for having three different upgraded designs for six points, and the last one is for having all five certifications and is worth eight points. To score an achievement, you need to use one of your speech tokens from your player board or a generic one from the side of your player board. Multiple players can score the same achievement. You then score one point for each shift you have banked, and you score one point for each speech token, book, and parts voucher on your board, as well as one point for each generic speech token next to your board. Next, look at the training track in each department. The player who is in first position scores five points, then three for second, and one for third. If multiple players are on the same space, it's the one on top of the stack who is considered ahead. And note, if you haven't trained in this department at all, you cannot score points. So here, purple scores five points, yellow scores three, and nobody gets the third place. You then gain points for each car in your garage. This is depicted here. And finally, you score points for each of your tested designs, the ones above your player board. Each design is worth a number of points according to the value of the depicted car part as shown here. And the player with the most points wins. If there is a tie, there are three tiebreakers. The most cars, the most tested designs, and then the most bank shifts. If somehow there is still a tie, all tied players share the victory. Four variants are included in the game for you to change things to suit your tastes. In the first variant, Sandra is a much nicer manager, rewarding you for things that you've done well, rather than penalising you for things that you've done badly. Use the side of the reference tile with the green stripe instead of the red stripe. Also, since you cannot lose points in this version of the game, players start on zero points instead of 15. Whenever Sandra evaluates a department, she rewards the players with the most training there instead of penalising the ones with the least training. And the criteria for receiving a reward is now for having two of the appropriate thing rather than not having two of them. The reward itself is simple. One point for each bank shift over five. The second variant is called the planner. During setup, place your four garage bonus tiles in any order you want. The tile with the lock is still placed on the rightmost space. And during the game, when you claim a car, it must be placed in your leftmost empty garage. Variant three is expert tuning. During setup, use the expert garage tiles instead of the basic ones. And it's as simple as that. But note, you could have some players using a basic garage tiles and the others using the expert garage tiles. For example, if experienced players are playing with a new player. The final variant is delayed tuning. In this variant, you keep the four leftmost garage bonus tiles next to your player board instead of placing them in the slots. Only the tile with the lock is placed in the rightmost space. And now, when you claim a car, you place it in one of your garages and choose any one of your tiles next to your board and place it in that garage. 
You can gain the bonus of the tile by flipping it over, but this cannot be done on the same turn as you gained the tile. And that is how you play Kanban EV. The game also comes with a solo mode, which I have a playthrough video for coming shortly after I release this video. So if you want to see that, find the link in the show notes or click on the little eye in the corner. I also aim to do a multiplayer playthrough in future too, and when I do that, I will add links as well. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions about the game, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you to Eagle Griffin Games for sponsoring this video, and to all of my Patreon supporters who help fund the channel. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.